Good morning. Welcome back to the Frost Dog Garage. I wasn't planning on doing a video so recent after the one that I had uh, done not too long ago, but I've got some notes. Um, thought I'd pass it along. Maybe it'll save someone some heartache as they get to work on their their Factory 5 Roadsters. Um, as you can see, I've got the Mark V up on the lift today. Just a little bit easier to get to some of the aluminum panels, and I can I can stand up right in the engine bay to work on the footbox panels. So. That's kind of nice. Um, starting off with my notes, the first one I have uh, just deals with these, these rivets that are provided in the complete kit. They just come in a bag like that. And I will say they're, they're not the best rivets out there, not the best quality. So it's up to you if you want to source some better rivets or go with what they have in the uh, kit. I've been able to make them work um, with the a few tweaks or hacks, I guess. And I'm just using this manual uh, rivet gun. I've never used the battery powered or elect electric uh, rivet guns. I hear they're, they're pretty good. But this is what I've got. This is what I'm using. Um, I've got the eighth inch mandrel in there for the eighth inch rivets. Um, and these are the ones that go from aluminum onto metal frame. So they're just a little bit, a little bit longer in this portion. Uh, the issue I had on the first couple ones that I did is, theoretically, you should be able to just take this and you, know, you put the rivet in, you put it in the hole, and with, with one good action of the lever, you should be able to uh, set and, and break the, the post off. Mine, it basically broke the post, and it, was not, it did not set the rivet. So through trial and error, I've kind of come to the point where I'll put it in, and then while keeping this part of the handle parallel, with the with the aluminum panel i'll action the lever maybe an inch inch and a half release it it allows the mandrel to grab a new portion of that post action it again inch and a half and usually by the third time i action it it'll break it off uh, the rivet will be set occasionally the post will still remain in there and if i action it a few more times it pulls the post out um, and some other times it's, it's broken off and it can't grab the remaining portion of the post. So while leaving it in there like this, I'll just uh, kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit until it, it uh, ends up breaking off the post just through fatigue. And when it does break off, it's either flush or just inside, so there's no, no sharp edges. It's not ideal, but it works. So that's my first note. It's just that the, the rivets are not real high quality, or maybe it's the, the uh, manual rivet gun that I'm using. Secondly, I'm using black RTV behind panels, um, or black silicone, and I just wanted to throw this up here. These Clorox, Clorox wipes, which you can get just about anywhere, um, they do wonders on removing excess uh, silicone that's the, whether it squeezes out from the panel when you're putting the panel on and tensioning it down um, a wipe it takes it right off also as you can see I'm using Clecos which is something I, I learned on the forums uh, just reading from the experts and I hadn't used them before and in the instructions it, it basically just tells you to do two things um, it tells you at least in this section where this is the back the, the seat back um, or rear cockpit panel. Um, it tells you to just put the silicone on the frame where the panel's going to go, put the panel on, uh, mark it, drill it out, and and set the rivets. Uh, that that's what it tells that's what it tells you to do in the manual. Uh, I want a cleaner installation than that. So what I ended up doing where it does say in the manual to mark behind the panel before ever removing it from, from the kit when you receive it, because this would be in place. Um, I did mark the back of the panel. Then I took the panel, I, I took it over to a piece of wood. I marked all the holes just using the rivet spacing tool. Then, another shout out to this uh, auto punch. I used this auto punch to punch the locations of all the holes and what this does is basically put an indentation in the aluminum panel so that your drill bit doesn't wander when you're trying to drill that hole. 
this thing works great. I think I just got it on Amazon, but little pressure and then it actuates and uh, leaves you a nice, nice little indentation for the drill bit. So I did that. Uh, I drilled out all the holes on on that uh, wood wood sheet. Then I bring it back over here, uh, put it in place. And what I found was at the bottom there's a bend. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the bend that they put in it was was not quite high enough up on the panel. So what it did is it caused even when the bend down here at the bottom was resting on the frame, it caused this piece here to be about a quarter of an inch above the frame rail. So what I had to do was, was do an additional bend down there. Um, actually, I flattened it out and then bent it a little bit higher up. So now it's resting on the frame. It's also resting on the frame rail and everything fits well. Other than I did have to um, cut just a or notch a little bit more this, this section here because of the weld here on the frame. Uh, if not, it would be sitting up against or sitting against that weld and it wouldn't rest back against the frame very well. I had to do the same thing on the other side. So don't be surprised if you have to do some modifications um, on these aluminum panels to get them to fit just right. So um, I did that and then <clears throat> I went ahead and brought it back over here, put it in place, made sure everything fit real well. And then I began to drill my holes. Um, on the subject of drilling, I highly recommend getting some of these short eighth inch drill bits. The ones I got, again, I think it was just on Amazon, but they just came in a little package like this, uh, gave me a good number of bits, and they're dual sided. So once you wear out one side, you can flip it around and uh, just use the other side. And so far, I've not broken a bit, knock on wood. Um, but they work great. I like the short ones because they can get into tight spaces. Um, I use this drill and another regular batter, battery power drill depending on, on location. But those little bits, they work great. So I uh, highly suggest getting some of those. In addition to that, using a little bit of oil on the bit every couple of holes um, also will help your, your bits last longer and, and it uh, drills easier. So just a little bit of oil on, on the end and, and uh, it'll, make, it'll save you some time and some heartache with any broken bits, things like that. So it's been, it's been working well. Um, and again, Clecos work great. So I put the panel in place, I drill out all the holes, I put Clecos in there just to hold it in, in place and I started at the top and worked down just so everything would, would, would set flush against the frame. I wouldn't have any, any bowing in the panel and that, that also uh, worked really well. I've almost finished drilling the holes on this panel. Uh, these Clecos, I, I, again, I think I just got on Amazon. They work really well. Uh, this tool comes with the, the set and you basically just go like that to remove the Cleco um, and same to insert it. They work, they work really well. I'm, I'm very impressed with these and really glad that I, I read about them on the forum because I can't imagine doing it uh, without them now, now that I've used them. Um, again, on the rivets. So I found that if, if I drill the hole and I, and I try and put a rivet in, and if it doesn't go in really easy just by hand like that, if it gets caught up at all, I found that it's, it's not a good idea to force it. Because if you do force it in and it's too tight and you try and rivet in place, um, I've had bad outcome with that. I've had them break off and I had them not set uh, properly because it's not, a, the, it's not allowed to kind of slide on the shaft when it's being set. But if you have a hole that's giving you problems, just get the drill bit in there, work a little bit, and then if it goes in like that, easy, two fingers, uh, rest assured this rivet will probably set. Uh, with no with no issues. I'm not going to demonstrate it uh, setting it right now because I still need to put silicone behind this panel. So I put the panel in place, get all the Clecos on, all the all the holes drilled, and once that's done I'll pull all the Clecos out, I'll take the panel off, and then I'll clean up all that excess, um, all the metal that's come off of those those holes. If you do it the way the instructions say and just go ahead and silicone it, put it on, drill it, and, and rivet it, then you're going to have inevitably between 
the aluminum panel in the frame, you're gonna have metal shavings in there. And they're, they're gonna prevent the frame or the uh, panel from setting flush against the frame. And even with silicone in there eventually, you're gonna have some rattling. So I would suggest kind of taking a little more time in the process to make sure everything's clean back there, then put the silicone down. Then you put the panel back in place and just put a few Clecos in to hold it right where you need it so all the, the holes will line up. And yes, since there's silicone back there, some of your Clecos will get gunked up. But again, back to the, uh, the Clorox wipes, I'll just pull one out and without releasing it, wipe it off. All of the silicone comes right off and the Cleco isn't gunked up and I can uh, reuse it immediately. Um, I'd also like to point out this, this little manual reaming tool. Somebody, again, on a forum said that they were using one. I saw it and went ahead and ordered the same one off of Amazon. But once you drill a hole, a lot of times there's little, little edge, uh, sharp edges left. Um, or since like on this panel, I use the auto punch from the back side. Sometimes it leaves just a little raised edge right there. So if you have a little manual reaming tool, you just put it in a hole, do a couple turns, it takes all that off, leaves a nice flat surface, and the rivet will be able to set uh, flush against there. So that works uh, really well. Again, um, yeah, I would suggest getting, getting something like this. You want a nice, nice clean install. Um, back to my notes, uh, let's see, talked about all that, um, really I think the only thing left is my last note, and I noticed that there's a newer version of the build manual out, the one that I was using was I think from February of this year, um, but there's one, a new one that's dated May. Uh, I kind of wish Factory 5 would have reached out or, or sent an email or something saying, hey, there's a new, a new manual out for your Mark V. Um, I just stumbled across it by accident. I don't know what's changed, so I can't speak to that. Um, I hope not too much has changed from the start to where the, the place that I'm at now on this panel. But I'll probably go back and, and reread and see if maybe they included some additional instructions. That's kind of what I hoped they, that they would do is uh, maybe include a few additional illustrations and uh, a little bit better instructions on, on a few of the things. But I understand they can't put everything in there. But uh, anyway, there is a new manual app. You can just go onto their website and download it and uh, be up to date. I think that's about it for this video. Um, yeah, if this helps you out, uh, gives you some ideas or whatever, like, share, subscribe. I certainly enjoy watching your videos and reading the forums. And I hope you're enjoying your, your build as much as I am. It's an adventure and I, and I love it. So we'll talk to you on the next one. You guys take it easy. Thanks.